There we uh, are. Saint, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, Ron's family, my family is English and Scottish, but Ron's family, we found out. One little thread. Yes, the Bryans were the Bryans. O'Briens oh, when they came. Ireland. And then he fought in the Revolutionary War. So he became a patriot. Became a patriot. He's an American. And anyway. a Presbyterian. And a Presbyterian. <laughs> uh, yeah, but who knows okay. what he was when he came from Ireland. Who knows? From the fatherland. Um, okay. Anyway. Hope you enjoy this uh, St. Patrick's Day meal. We're about to start. Yeah, we're going to start our St. Patty's Day meal. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Here we Good. finish. Um, this is the corned beef. You want to see what the corned beef is? It's called corned beef brisket, which means it's a brisket of beef. It's normally a tough cut of meat. Lots of, um, it needs to be cooked a long time. This one cost $8.43 because it was $2.48 a pound. It's nearly three and a half pounds. According to tradition and according to the directions, you want to count, uh, cook it for about 50 minutes per pound. So I'm figuring three hours would be enough because it's not quite four pounds and, and it's 50 minutes a pound. So not doing the math, just figuring it out. That's what I would do. Okay. Now, let me show you what else is in here. Oh, my friend Ryan suggested that we get a particular brand. This is St. Helens. It's made in, it's from Idaho. And since we live in Portland, that's a good time to have it. Um, there's also always in one of these that I like is this little packet of seasonings. It's um, a, just different seasoning that make corned beef taste the way corned beef and cabbage is supposed to taste. Um, there's the little mustard seed and some other uh, spices. So I'll put that in the water when I begin to cook the meat. I have cut the top off, or Ron did really, just to open it. That makes it good. And I'm going to take it over to the pot of water. And while we're doing this, I'll tell you what we're going to be adding. Ron started the water a few minutes ago. We're supposed to just cover the, the, uh, the brisket with uh, water and then turn it on to cook and simmer it. Oh, you like this, right, Lily? There's the, there's the brisket, and there's some of the juices. And here is the... Hello, uh, Lily. Yeah, hi, Lil. Uh, let me get the, the, the scissors. We're also going to put potatoes, carrots... I often use, uh, put in a uh, turnip or a rutabaga, but I'm not going today because I don't have them. Remember, this is what you, you cook with what you have. So you want to do that. I'm going to scrape something off that I just see. It's where the, the juice clabbered. That means because the juice was, was the blood. Okay. So you're gonna, we're going to cook that now for about three hours. And, and then when it gets to the end, probably about two hours, I'm going to add the cabbage the potatoes, and I use red potatoes, and I'll get back to you in a little bit and show you how we prepare those. And okay. I'm going to use baby onion. Here we are. We're going to go ahead and start with adding some of the vegetables. Okay. I just sliced into this onion, and you see part of it is yeah. bad, but not all of it. So yeah. I'm going to use, we don't throw the whole onion away. A bad onion is not a, is not a wasted onion. We'll take off the skin. There's a spot. Yeah. Let's see that. No, that is the Yeah, it's kind of gone back, and I don't know why, because we just... We didn't get them very long ago. I can't remember where we got them, but we'll have to figure that out. I'll cut off the bad spots. This knife is pretty wicked, isn't it? Ugh. That's what one of you commented on, a, on a, one of those YouTube comments. You said, that looks like a wicked knife, and it does, but it's it a is, good knife it? to cut. I well, love it. Well, it keeps the troops in line. Yeah, it keeps everybody. Ron, don't you mess with me. I won't. Don't that was you not when you're holding that puppy. No. Okay, we've had this probably for, I think it was 1975 when I got my first one, and this may be the first one. Because I've gotten one since then, but uh, we have two. I think you have it out that you were doing some yard work with. Not what I want my knives out doing, but do you know where that is? I saw it in the garden somewhere. You were using a, one of these for something in the yard? Oh, I was splitting wood with it. Splitting wood. So it's a multi purpose knife. But that's why I had to get a second one in the first place. But I think this is my original one. And whenever you're going to buy a knife, I got this in Chinatown, San Francisco. Uh, because my Asian friends told me that you can't have a kitchen, you can't work without a cleaver. And you always want to make sure that the metal goes all the way through the handle. This was a very inexpensive one. At the time, it cost $5.50. But it's steel, so I just use a SOS pad to clean it, to take the rust off. Because if you don't dry it, which I usually dry it, but Ron's not always the best on drying it. Um, those happy laughs in the background are granddaughter, Amelia, and my grandniece, Miriam, and they're playing with Lily, so it's a happy sound. All right, what we're going to do next is I'm going to use um, these cabbages. We've got two. I'm going to cut the heart out and then slice it into chunks to add at the very end. All right, thank you. Hi. I have to tell you that I'm crying, not because I'm sad, but because the onions have gotten to my eyes. 
So I'm going to start. Ooh, I should have been listening more. I'm cutting off the uh, cutting the end off the cabbage. You cut it in half, cut it in quarters, and then can come in. You see the heart of the cabbage? Start up here and just chop it down. That. That's the best way, unless you take it and beat it like I said the other day, but it, we don't have a corner. We've got this um, metal sink, and it's just not quite strong enough for me to beat that cabbage up. So well, it looks I, like you got a nice collection of worm food, huh? A nice, yes, I was going to say, if it wasn't raining, we'd take that out and feed the worms. We'll do that another day. Then I take this, and I do it in quarters. The main reason is you want it to, to cook, but also you want it to be... Not too stringy, so then I usually do this one more way. Okay, so when those are done, when I put all this stuff, and I kind of let it flop apart, it'll cook nicely for the, um, for the meal. Now, I take off this outer leaf here, and you could use that. You know what I've heard? There's a lot of things to do with cabbage, and you should eat the things that are in the uh, season. Cabbage is a good winter vegetable. It's got the things that you need, and also you can make rolls, uh, cabbage rolls. And um, the best way, uh, my Russian friend told me, to make the best cabbage rolls is you freeze a head of cabbage. And after it's frozen, it comes apart much more easily. And the, um, the uh, leaves are soft to be able to be rolled. So that's kind of good. Then we're going to cut these potatoes. I've washed them, so now I'm going to just take them like this. If the eyes are growing and want to cut them out, I always look to make sure there's no bad spots. And because these are the perfect size to cook whole, and these big ones are not, I'm going to cut them so they're about the same size. Mm. See that? Yeah. That way they'll all cook. And I maybe, do you, should I leave that one whole? Maybe I will. Okay, so I've got these potatoes. They're a variety of sizes. If you go to the store and you don't buy them in a bag, you want to pick them out. You want to pick them out even smaller, but about like that. These are red potatoes. And I get red because they look pretty. There's the green cabbage, the red meat, the red and white potatoes, and then we're going to put the orange carrots in after. But none of that takes very long. All right, end of the day. It's nearly 5 o'clock, and our brisket is looking good. I've just pulled it up to the top, and here's our potatoes are done. Look, at they just cut with a spoon. The cabbage, the carrots, everything is wonderful. So I'm keeping it simmering, not boiling, simmering. And we're going to have mustard. I like uh, both the uh, Dijon and also a good old French's yellow mustard. And we're going to eat, and we're going to enjoy it. So um, have a lovely St. Patrick's Day. I hope that you've already fixed yours. Bye. Well, we had a lovely dinner, and these were the placemats that the kids made. There's the uh, one they made for me with the pot of gold, and here's a little four-leaf clover, and there's Papa in a, a cowboy hat. And look at that one. Amelia did a beautiful one with the blue pot and the um, rainbow going out. And then she did this one for Mommy, and it is raining gold throughout the sky. We had a great dinner for St. Patrick's Day.